Hi, this is Don on YouTube. I'm going to start a new series, another series today on Mary, uh, focusing on two books. Uh, one of them is Mary, the Faithful Disciple by <clears throat> Bertrand Booby, particularly the chapter on, on uh, Mary and the Pauline Writings. That's chapter 3. Then I'm going to look at part two of In Memory of Her, which I briefly described in the previous set of videos on Mary. Uh, so she talks about the Jesus movement as renewal <clears throat> within Judaism. So it's a movement within Judaism. And then she... Uh, <clears throat> the other movement is the Christian movement. Or the early Christian movement is... is uh, let me just give you a, uh, a look at the uh, heading of the chapter here. Chapter 5. The Early Christian Missionary Movement uh, Equality and the Power of the Spirit So uh, she equates Christianity with missionary movement So uh, sort well I'm going to get into that later so I, I guess I don't have to give oops yeah, it's recording. I guess I don't have to go into that right now, but uh, I'm going to start with, uh, you know, after I might, I might return to this book in a later video and, and, and go over the chapters on, I haven't read yet on Luke and uh, Matthew. And chapter 5 is Mary and Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 6, Mary and Luke's Gospel. And there might be some other stuff. Oh, here it is. Mary and John's Gospel is, is chapter 7. Revelation and Mary is chapter 8. And early biblical reflections. So there's a lot of stuff to cover here. I haven't even read <laughs> anything but the, the chapter 3 in this, this book. So maybe I could just discuss that briefly in this first video here. Uh, uh, Paul never uses the words disciple or discipleship. So it seems a little odd that the title of this book would be Mary the Faithful Disciple. So obviously, uh, uh, Booby is getting that from somewhere else in the Bible. Probably the Gospels. So there's <clears throat> there's about six passages or verses that Booby signals out that could possibly relate to Mary, although it's not clearly stated. Uh, Paul never mentions the name of Mary. Either he didn't know it, or he didn't think he didn't think it, it was important. The focus of Paul is always on the death and resurrection of Jesus. That's where the power lies. You know, there's no power in his earthly birth. Is the impression I've gotten from these readings. So when Paul uh, speaks of of Mary, he's strictly speaking of her as a mother. He uh, he's saying that Jesus had to be born of a Jewish woman. Uh, In the line of David, so he, he doesn't have any uh, 
problem with that. Uh, he's not uh, arguing against that or anything. So uh, let me see these points again here. Uh, well, Paul's writings were the earliest writings in the New Testament, probably around 50 A.D. to 60 A.D. The Gospels came later. Uh, for, uh, Paul s says that the only one of, of the Jesus family that he met was James, the brother of the Lord. Now, the brother of the Lord is kind of a mixed mixed uh, mixed idea. It's like, does that mean um, I'm, I'm <laughs> blood relative like a brother or an actual brother that was born to Mary? Uh, or, or does it mean uh, uh, that Mary remarried and possibly this James was uh, a step stepbrother. Another possibility is that James was the disciple, the son of Alphaeus. Uh, some people believe that also. So depending on which group you're in, people have different views on who James was. So when Paul says that he knew James, uh, the brother, it's, it's not totally clear who that's referring to. Uh, some of these other passages, like, uh, talk about, it does, it's not talking about Mary, it's talking about Jesus as he, he uh, gave up his divinity or whatever to come to earth. Uh, in other words, he made himself a servant to all or whatever, <laughs> rather than being Lord of all or something. So uh, when you when you look at Mary's Magnificent in the Gospels, it, it, she's, a, she's a handmaid of the Lord. So she, in that way, they're kind of similar, but it, it doesn't have a direct connection there. It's just kind of showing how they were both of low birth, uh, uh, they didn't uh, try to, to gain any glory for themselves. Anyways, uh, there's, there's some other passages. I, I guess the best thing would just be to pick up a copy of this book and read it. But uh, Galatians 4.4, 4, it says, But when the designated time... Kronos had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to deliver from the law those who were subjected to it, so that we might receive our status as adopted sons. Galatians 4, 4, and 5. So here again, it's uh, the power comes from the resurrection. There, there's no power in Jesus being born of a woman. It's just fulfilling prophecy, whatever. So I think now we should get into the other book. You know, I, like I said, there's about six verses that uh, Booby mentions. We could go through all of them, but I think I've covered it pretty well. So we'll get into the, in the next video, we'll get into this other book, In Memory of Her, and see how there was a split between uh, mo different movements and how they apply to Mary. Uh, I wish I could say that I know where this is going, but uh, it's going to be a gradual, uh, you know, finding out. I, I don't really have the answer 
answers to all my questions right now, but I'm hoping that through this uh, study, things will become a little bit clearer. I know there's a lot of confusion in regard to Christian origins and things. So that's kind of what we're uh, aiming at. Thanks.